gamla of an inyir yidus avaya al har sinai. So we have to understand what was accomplished by Matan Torah. That's the first thing. The second thing we have to understand is what's the whole idea that Hashem came down on Mount Sinai. The Kedah is Rakim, and He didn't just come down, He came down. It describes the whole way that He came down with certain voices, and then there was um, there was lightning, and, and a lot of stuff happened there. Kedah uh, is thunder and lightning, but there's a lot of spiritual ideas that happened there. But Seres Hadibres, during the time that the Aseris Hadibres were given, and not just that, but when the Aseris Hadibres were given, the souls of everybody who was standing there, the souls of the entire Jewish people, with each dibur, the souls went out of the body. And even the souls that came down as souls, there was some kind of aliyah. And then it says that Hashem took from the tal, from the du, from tchis amesim, and He revived them then. So you had two different inyanim. Tchis amesim is a tremendous, tremendous thing. And the fact that, um, the, the fact that it was a part of, or, or in a small, a part of Matan Torah, and with each commandment, is also a, a tremendous thing. Max seemingly, what's written, what's written in them, it's very, very simple things. You have this whole spiritual awakening, you have this whole revelation of Hashem that was never before, and it says that Matan Torah was one time and one time only. And what what's a, what what was said then? Don't murder, don't commit adultery. Stuff that if the Torah was not given, we would know not to do. If a person wants to be close to Hashem, if a person wants to 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 walk in the right path, so if we ask, should we murder somebody? No. Should we uh, should we commit adultery? No. These are simple things that we can that, that we can learn. Shame the verb shoot him. Which are the simple things shigam sechol nushi mechayvon. Even our own mind, even our own knowledge, recognizes not to do these things. Yuvon kolze behekti mashakos of mishneh teira. We'll understand all of this by first understanding what it says in Dvarim. Acha says a dibreis. There's two times that a says a dibreis is mentioned in teira. One is Bashis Yisrael in Chumash Meis. The other one is in Mishnah Teirah. Mishnah Teirah is Chumash Dvarim. Why is Dvarim called Mishnah Teirah? Second, the second going over of the Teirah. Because, on, on a simple level, because it has all of the commandments before, basically. It, it's a rehash of uh, part of Shemais and, and Vayikra and, and uh, the Midbar. Uh, on the other hand, also, Hashem gave the first four Chumashim. Hashem said, Meisha writes this. The, the other one, Chumash Dvarim, was Meisha's addition. Meisha's addition means that the Jewish people accomplished a new revelation inside of the Torah. So, and in fact, it tells a story in Pirkei Avis, there's a story of uh, five different sages. And it says that each one of them, and the Rebbe give, brings this in, in a lot of uh, his commentaries, that each one of these sages was connected with a Chumash. There's a look in this poor switch in Mabi Tipa he 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 Rabbi Elzim Hukness was was against uh Sefer Bereshis, which has a lot of secrets and therefore he was called a um a deep well that, that doesn't lose a drop, but uh State doesn't just mean deep, it means secret. Uh Rabbi Lazar ben Arach was Khumish Dvarim and he was called Kemayan Hamiz Gaber. He was like a well that continually increased. Why? Because when we add to our service, it causes an increase above. When we do a mitzvah, when we add into a mitzvah, we make a chiddush. Uh, that's a proper chiddush. That's within the realm of Torah. Then um, what we're doing is we're increasing the amount of the flow, the amount of connection that Hashem brings down into the world, and the amount of brachas that Hashem brings down into the world. So right after Chumash Devarim, where it repeats the giving of the Torah, where it mentions the Aserah of Debris in short, it says, Kishalcha bin Chamacha Leimer. When your son tomorrow will ask you, Ma'oidus, Gamer, what are these statutes? Exactly what we say on Pesach. You should say to your son, 
Yet, when the goof, uh, when the neshama is in a goof, it says it finds many bad things. It says kol hadrachim cheskas sakana. That all of the any way you go, there's a chazak that there's a sakana over there. We have to be careful on it. It finds in general many bad things. It finds many things that try to confuse it, that try to turn it away from Hashem. And on the goof, we could say sun meira. Go away from bad. You can't tell neshama sun meira. It's not. It's not shayish. It's not applicable. Shaguf nimshach acharov because the guf b'teva usually goes after bad. There's an explanation in Perik Chavtes of Tanya. Um, it explains that there's two different. You know, you have a very satzadikim and you have a very sabenim. The whole Tanya is about how any person could become a benini. So the Atar Rebbe says, what's the difference in the Gufim? The Guf of the Benini is still separate. The Guf of the Benini, you have to tell Sumira, watch out. The Guf is also the main part of the person. And the Neshama is, and Neshama, Shunasatva B. The Neshama that you put inside of me. What's me? The body. That's by a regular person, it's even by a Benini. By a Tzaddik, it says, Besara Adam. It's the exact opposite. He's the Neshama. And the, um, the, the, 
good is something that belongs to it, something that it involves in. And it brings down there that when Hillel would go eat, uh, that he would say he's going to be Gaimel Chesed, that he's going to do kindness with the one that is downtrodden. That's how he's feeding his body. Shagufnim <laughs> um, the Guf naturally, by a regular person, it goes, it naturally goes after bad, and our job is to transform it. And that's why our Neshama was sent down here. Vasitayiv, and also through doing good, we have, we have to do good, Bikiyam Mitzvah Tasei, Hamitzvah Maishis, and these are physical mitzvahs, and what are those for? In order to also pick up the body. The Gashmi is my tzitzis, the tzitzis, the shefer, the sukkah, the lulav, the demeyan, and all of these mitzvahs that we have to do, whether it's sukkah or lulav or tzitzis, or whether it's a, a mitzvah that we do once a day, or a mitzvah we do most of the day, or a mitzvah that we do uh, once a year. But all of these mitzvahs, each one has a certain special thing, and not just that, but how many mitzvahs are there? 613. How many parts of the body, if you want to divide the body into general uh, categories of, uh, of, of an aver and of a vein, you have 248 avarim, which the people mistranslate as organs, but it means parts of the body. This, this would be one aver, this would be, you know, so 248 um, general parts, and you have 365 different channels and paths for the, for the blood to flow through or for the blood to be oxidated. Uh, that uh, which, which transmits life into the body. So the body is made up of different parts, one according to each mitzvah. But the neshama by itself, when it's on, let's say, a higher level, the terrier does a little maza before it comes down to ilmaza, while it's waiting to come down to be connected with the essence of Hashem, of, of Hashem in a new way through the Ermitvis. Before it comes down, and that level, on the level of Neshama, the before and the after, it doesn't need these physical mitzvahs. So why did the Neshama come down? The Neshama is up there, it, it, it uh, sees the highest of things, it, it's in a very, very high state. It's very closely connected with Hashem. Why does it wait thousands of years? And it says that each second down here is precious, and each second down here is a an, is an, is an, uh, whole concept that it needs for the rest of its existence, for, for eternity. What is the reward? But what is the gain from it coming down here? With Frat, what we said before, that when it comes into the body, it could turn away from Hashem. And that every way is, is full of the danger, there's dangers in every, every possible way. On this, the Torah answers us clearly. The main part of the mitzvah, the main, the, 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 what do what mitzvahs lead to? The purpose of mitzvahs is in order to have Yira Hashem. In order to have Yira Hashem means on, on different levels. One is the foundation of all service, but here too the mitzvahs bring us to a certain level, level where it's so high, where we just, you know, it, it brings us to a closeness to Hashem, where we can actually see the greatness of Hashem in a way that even the highest neshama can't without coming down here first. Beer Indians, the explanation of the Indian is It's written to you, Hashem, is greatness, which goes on chesed. Because everything is made first through chesed. It's the first in Hashem's mashav alone and comes out when Hashem is, is, is uh, working strongly with making the world so is, is more engrossed in it. The first midah is chesed. And through what is chesed, as chesed is giving. So Hashem is giving his flow into the world and wants to give this that Hashem is called great, Chazal said, when is he called great? 
when he is in the city of Hashem. It's a play on the Pasuk, or it's, it's something we learn out from the Pasuk. But what it means when he's in the city of Alekeinu. What's Alekeinu? When he is Kecheinu V'chayuseinu. When, not when Hashem is the way he is above. That's not adding to the greatness of Hashem Chas So we'll explain this for a second. But just the simple meaning is, when is he great in a way that we can call great? When he is in Ir Elikim, when he is coming down to make worlds, when he stops being above the world, which is Shema Vaya, and he comes down into Ir Elikim, which is Kechinu Vichayasinu. He becomes the life force of the world, not something that is higher than the world. Now, what does it mean? It also says, uh, where you see Hashem's greatness, there you see His unevilness, there you see His humility. Why? Because for Hashem to come out in all of these things, He, he doesn't need it. And it's a step down for Him. But when are we able to say, we're able to say many different things about Hashem. If Hashem is doing a war against enemies, we don't get up and start praising Hashem's kindness at that point, because the praise doesn't fit the action. Yes, He's being kind. Yes, the severity even is being kind. Not just us. The temple is picking them up. He's lifting them up out of, out of the garbage that they're in. There's a, a kindness to that too. But that's not the praise that we give at that point, because that's not the action that's being done. When Hashem is giving kindness, that's when we praise. Hashem's kindness. So when do we use the Lashem Gedula by Hashem when He's making all of these things? Pirish Kimash, Nikri Godel, Hashem Gedula, Seish, Mispashit, Mirish Kodarkin, at Seif Kodarkin. What is being Gedula here? That Hashem comes out from the highest of all levels to the lowest of levels. And there's a... Um, Marshal the Fidik Rebbe gives in in Maimon and Tzadik Vodif, but it's it's from a Medrash. It says Malach b'Shlisha Elo Maimon. Malach stands at the at a third of the world, and uh, Reb Wolf, uh, the old Mashri Reb Wolf, bring us used to talk about this uh, a lot. That there's two Purushim, and this the Fidik Rebbe says in the Maimon. The Purushim one is that the Malach is a third of the world, and uh, the other Purushim is that the world is a third of the Malach. It's talking about one of the lowest malachim. Now, what does it mean? It's not talking about a shoe size. It, it means that spiritually, a person has this much chachma, the malach has a third of the entire chachma of the world, or according to the other peers, three times the amount. A third of the chesed, a third of the, the gvur. So even, and that's on a lower level now, extrapolate from the malach, that's a malach in Asiya. The difference between a malach in Asiya and something down here, Asiya Gashmish, that would compare to it would be like, let's say, a cat, or, or whatever kind of type of manifestation there is in this world that would compare to the malach, but the malach is the shei yourself. The difference between that malach that is so many billions of times smarter than a person and feels so much more, billions of times more avas Hashem and yiris Hashem naturally than a person down here can feel, is the difference between that and a cat is the same difference between that malach in Asiya and a malach in Yitzira. That's how much greater the malach in Yitzira is. And then extrapolate that, that the malach in Yitzira has that much of a, a um, what we call a a farness, a distance between him and the Malach of Asiya, that it has between between him and the Malach of Bria. And the Malach of Bria, which is called a Saraf, it says that Hashem could stick out his little finger, which goes on Malachas da Atsilus, and the, the, the Malach would be totally consumed. There would be too much godliness for the Malach to take. The Shema is able to take it. Especially down here, where it will also take it to turn this is that and more. But the mouth would be consumed by that. So if you think about the different levels, you see the tremendousness of these levels. Now, this is not even called the Reish Kodargan. This is talking about Biyah. We're talking about more the end levels, as great as they are. But Hashem, from the highest of the levels to the lowest of the levels, that's all made through Chesed. That's all made through through one attribute within say there's Tashlus. At the beginning, I mean there's other attributes that come into play. But at the beginning there's there's one way out there and, and more specifically it says just with Hashem's Chachmah 
everything was able to be made. That's why we say there's a Sar Memores. What's the what's the first of the ten Memores? Bereshis. Because with Chachma, that one Maimer has inclusive in it all the rest of creation. So it's one word of Hashem. But that's when he's called Godel. That's when, when he's going through all of these different levels, that's when we're able to say the name Godel on him. Birshkimash, and Ikura Godel, Hashem is the Lord, 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 to make from Ayin to Yesh all of the Netzalim and Nevraim. What's the difference between a Netzal and a Nevraim? Netzal means it was created, but it, it's close to Hashem. It's an emanation, I won't say in English. It's not something that has its own separate entity, but it's a being. Um, a Nivra is its own being. Now, the question is whether it's, an, it's a Nivra in Il Mabriya, where it feels how it's part of Hashem's thought where it feels that close to Hashem, or if it's in Elam Yitzira, where it feels that it's part of, it's like something that just came out of Hashem's Dibur, so it's bottled to Hashem, it recognizes its life force, but it, it feels like a separate thing, but not that separate, something that's just coming out of Hashem, or whether it's in Asiya, where it feels as an entity for itself, but an entity that was created by Hashem, and that is constantly being created by Hashem, and feels its mocker, or whether it's an image down here, which doesn't feel its mocker. But those are the different levels. Mm-hmm. In any case, all of these Nad Solim and Nivraim, uh, and all the different types of Nivraim specifically, the Khulu, Allah Kaimon, he makes all of them and, and, and when he's coming down to give them Chayis and, and to make them exist, you created the heavens and, and everything that's in them, but the Chayis Kulam. You create everything in Kama, River, Revovi, Salem, is told by my mother, and how many tens of thousands of tens of thousands of worlds are dependent on his one word. There's actually an infinite amount. So, is there any uh, number to his legions? Which means there is no number. This type of greatness is not called greatness at all unless he actually makes it. In other words, yes, he has the power to make much, much more. But he's only called great when he actually makes these worlds. And that's greatness for us. That's, that's not what Hashem's true greatness is, but that's us being able to call him great. And how does he make them with... with uh, with Tzuruf Yaisis, with the different um, letter formations, but to sp- explain this specifically, every letter is not a letter. Every letter above is a part of the Chayas from Hashem. It's a manifestation of Chayas from Hashem. So the Adam Arishin was a great Chachem, and he was able to um, he was able to call the names of the animals by what they were. Uh, the, the Hashem brought the Sher to stand in front of him, and he said, this is a Sher. Now, what's the greatness of that? And why was it called specifically a share? Because uh, because other saw that the share is made mostly from the chayis of Hashem that manifests itself in in the form of a shin, and then he has a little bit of chayis from a vav, and then he has less chayis, but some chayis from a resh, and that together makes share. So this ox is a share, and it stems from uh, the malachim that are in the pnei share. From the Malachim that are, are considered like the, um, that emanate from what's called the face of the arcs on the chariot, which, which is Hashem's Gvura, or a manifestation of Gvura in, in the worlds, uh, more specifically put. Uh, but through all of these different letter combinations, an unlimited amount of worlds is made. And what does it mean, an unlimited amount of worlds? And not just that, but even physically, it talks about that Hashem made an unlimited amount of planets. So how could you have an unlimited amount of limited objects? So this is, that's a um, that shows the greatness of Hashem. That Hashem creates nature. He creates all of the different gedarim. He creates all of the different ways that the world works. There's limited and there's unlimited. And unlimited is not limited, and limited is not unlimited. But guess what? Hashem creates both. 
what is unlimited and what is limited, and therefore you can combine the two. And that shows the greatness of Hashem. There's somebody who wrote the, the Rebbe letter saying, it says that there's uh, one of the proofs about Hashem running the world is that there's a, a, a piece of one of the proofs is that, uh, that you can't have an unlimited amount of limited objects. So the Rebbe says it's not a question because when you're talking to an applicator is so when you're talking to somebody who has no moment. So he explains them that even through logic, logic demands that there's something above logic. Logic demands that there's somebody running and creating everything. But above that, to talk about the way Hashem really is, then yes, Hashem can do things that are absolutely impossible from our standpoint. So you can have an unlimited amount of limited objects. But when Hashem creates something like that, that's when he's called... Uh, that's when we say God on Hashem be early came. That's when we use the term God on Hashem, uh, greatness.